Good early afternoon, everyone. So, AI, artificial intelligence, HAL 9000, Alan Turing, the Turing test, the singularity. We are in a world where the uh, integration of and the evolution of artificial intelligence has become one of the most key questions and often at times something that fills people with a degree of trepidation if not actual anxiety and alarm and we are going to explore some of what uh, BCG and the MIT Sloan Review have found about the way in which companies are continuing to, to grapple with the evolution of and the integration of artificial intelligence and how that impacts the individuals who are working there. So first, just a show of hands, how many of you use AI tools in your work today or at least uh, think you do? Interesting. And how many of you uh, think that AI is a, uh, a threat to jobs and employment and not as many? So um, Jessica, maybe you could start us off with what we were talking about before, which is uh, people may not think they're using AI, but maybe they're, maybe they're using it and they're not aware that they are. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think if you think of AI, First of all, you have to be a bit clearer about what you call AI, right? So when we refer to AI technologies, we think of technologies that actually learn over time and improve a process and support a process. So if you think, for example, I have a very smart question and I need a lot of data to answer that, but it's one single question, that's analytics, that's big data, that's not AI. AI is actually embedded in things that you will use that supports decision making. For example, when you use um, navigation systems, AI is embedded in voice recognition software. So it improves that recognition and that understanding over time. Yes, and, and if I may add on that, in the, uh, the report we, we did and the, the, the research we did with uh, my friend David, we found that 28% of people are actually using AI without realizing it. So there are, as you said, uh, Jessica, people are so embedded, AI is so much embedded that you have a lot uh, a lot there. You, when you use Salesforce, Einstein, or where you use even, uh, let's say, Alexa or others, AI is, is uh, embedded. And you mentioned before, am I on? Yeah, you mentioned before using things like Alexa or Google Assistant. So let's ask the question again. How many of you use AI? <laughs> <laughs> More should raise their hand. Um, I wonder, David, maybe you could talk us for a moment about what you've found. I mean, you've been doing these studies about companies and the relationship between artificial intelligence over the past six years, and you said this year you looked more at the uh, relationship between individuals and, and artificial intelligence within a corporate context. So maybe you can tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so one of the things that we really tried to figure out this year in our research was this, like, this idea that companies are getting value at the ex from AI at the expense of individuals. And what we found was that it's, it's, it's not true. And in fact, at a deeper level, the question doesn't even make that much sense. Because when AI use is pervasive in the enterprise, what you're finding, it is. People are using AI in business applications. They may not even be aware that they're, that they're using applications that use AI. Uh, like, there, there are no trade-offs sometimes, in, 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 in many instances, between using AI and, uh, and uh, people getting value, and the company getting value from AI. So uh, Francois, maybe give us some examples of the ways in which particularly individuals are, are getting advantages from the, the, the utilization of AI within companies. So basically I would say three, three things. Very often when they work hand in hand with AI, they will improve their competence. Um, so, for instance, uh, you, and, and let's take one example of, um, let's say, uh, a company or when you have a, a salesperson and you ask him or her to go and visit a store and to choose the stores and the next best action, the offer they need to give to their. So basically, they will increase their competence because AI will, tell, will add, will recommend, will propose, and, and many companies get this. So competence is critical. The second is because of the quality of the recommendation 
the human plus the eye to a certain extent, and uh, a good friend uh, of mine doesn't call it artificial intelligence, but augmenting intelligence. And as it is augmenting intelligence, basically, you have more autonomy. Your manager is, is less needed. We all know that the role of a manager is to make you do things that you should not do otherwise. But here, as the human plus AI is recommendation and is better, then you need less managers, so you have more autonomy. And, um, and the last thing is that it improves relationships. For instance, we found that 56% of people believe that thanks to AI, their relationships with their colleagues is better. And just 3% believe that it's, it has worsened. And, and I think that through this competence, autonomy, and relationship, you have something that is really important in the way you live, in your, uh, you live your job. And therefore, it, it drastically, significantly increases your own value and the value you get through AI. Yeah, and just, just to follow up on that, the importance of having a tool that can improve your competence, autonomy, and, and uh, relationships is, is huge. In the social psychology literature, these are the key ingredients of being self-determined in, in your life. These are the key ingredients for basic uh, psychological needs. And if you're going to satisfy basic psychological needs with AI, AI is actually helping people to become more human and more satisfied. So, I mean, give us some examples, like some really, like real world companies that have, where individuals have found within their organizations that these tools are not at all threatening, they're actually empowering and enhancing. But maybe if I can give you one. Uh, we were working for a consumer products company in France, and uh, to Francois' example, we were deploying AI based recommendation engines for sales reps when they're visiting stores on what they should be doing uh, changing their shelf. Uh, changing the products that they put forward, changing the prices, things like that. We, were, we started off the deployment by a pilot group of about 20 sales reps out of 150. The tool was working so well and people were so happy to use it that the unions in France actually uh, asked for a strike if the tool was not uh, expanded faster because they thought that was an unfair advantage to the people that had the recommendation engine. That's a true story, and I don't know if you know unions in France, they're not easy to work with. But because you actually give the tools to people to do their job better, it actually helps them achieve their bonus, it helps them make better decisions, it helps them outperform in the market. Of course they like it, there is no reason why they would not. And then it also brings more productivity to them. But productivity is a byproduct of the intelligence. It is not the core effect of the intelligence. That I'm going to remember, that may be a first time where a group of people have threatened to strike on behalf of AI. Yeah. And in France, no less. And in I mean, France. That's, and in that France. is like a, a perfect example. <laughs> but uh, sort of on that, and, and as a counterpoint to Jessica, you know, a lot of us have the impression, I think a lot of people who work in companies, when they hear that there's a corporate initiative to integrate more artificial intelligence tools, data man not just data management, but analytics, decision making, predictive analytics, machine learning, you know, they, they understandably get somewhat trepidatious that that is going to replace them, right? That there's going to be a replacement effect of the job I'm doing will soon be done by a, a quasi-intelligent machine. Is that a... I mean, is that actually a threat or is that uh, overstated? The, the perception of the threat is, is stronger than the actuality of the threat in, in, in many cases. Uh, what, look, at, at the team level, we found this last year, there's a great quote from uh, Ed Schein, an MIT professor, um, on culture. He said, culture is like an immune system. It is for the group what a defense mechanism is for the individual. And what we found is like, once you overcome the immune response to adopting AI, there are all kinds of positive spillover effects on team culture. And it includes improved collaboration, improved uh, morale, improved clarity of roles, and improved like learning. 
And is that because some of the tasks, at least now, that sort of machine learning and quasi-intelligent are removing the need of, of people to do mindless repetitive tasks? You know, is it, is it that or is it more than that? I, I would like maybe to, to pick this one, if you don't mind, because I think that limiting AI to removing this type of tasks is the wrong mindset. Actually, AI is really augmenting you. And uh, I was the other day um, on a trading floor, and uh, the head of this trading floor was telling me, this is amazing how my traders and AI are learning from each other. Of course, at first, AI will learn from the decisions made by the, um, by, by the traders and so on, but then, thanks to the recommendations made by AI, basically it opens new paths of thinking, new, new paths to value in that case. Um, and, and, and I think that we need to look at AI, and even I would say that AI so far is not used enough to identify patterns that we cannot identify. It is much too much um, located, focused on automation and on forecasting. These are important things. Optimizing is an important part of AI, but identifying patterns, tomorrow getting supported by the generative algorithm will be even more important. And maybe if I can give you an example of uh, that I know in the field that I know of marketing, of how AI actually improved collaboration to the point that you were making. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if we have marketers around the room, but if you, you are, thank you. <laughs> so if you work in marketing, you are used to meetings where people dispute has something worked or not worked. It's bread and butter in marketing. So we did this campaign, we did this event. Has it worked? Somebody will come up with a measurement and say, I believe it has. Somebody will come up with another measurement and say they have not. And that creates conflict and tension in marketing all of the time. If you use AI common based tools to actually measure marketing at scale and all of your activations, what it does is effectively it creates a common language, a common source of truth for people to take decisions off of jointly. And when you have that, and with the explicability of AI, this is the measurement, this is why of the measurement, this is the recommended next step, that transparency actually creates better collaboration and decision making, rather than the uncertainty and the conflict that comes from the lack of transparency and the lack of understanding. Yeah, one, so, other, one other thing on, on culture, if I may. <laughs> it's, uh, last year we looked, if you think about culture as operating on three levels, one is the top level is behavioral. These are the behaviors that are common practice in organizations. And then below that, there are the values that help frame, guide the behaviors. And below that, at the foundational level, are assumptions. And what we found is that AI can help organizations change the assumptions that drive their like, organization. There's a wonderful example from uh, CBS where uh, uh, the chief data officer yes. wound up giving 50 years of uh, KPI data on what makes for a successful TV show to her analytics team and, or data science team. And she said, I want to know whether or not the KPIs that I have are the right KPIs going forward. And the team came back with, and I, I want to know also whether or not the ones that I have are like good or bad. And the, uh, and what the data science team came back with was, here are, the, here are the, the ones that you have are fine, but here are two new ones you should really sort of focus on as well. These were the assumptions that were driving like what counted for success in their organization. So uh, Francois and Jessica, uh, companies come to you with questions they want to answer. So what are companies coming to you to answer about you know, AI integration, also how it affects individual workers within the organization. And on the flip side, and maybe Jessica, you can talk about this, what questions should they be asking? <laughs> so I, in my opinion, the, the, the main question is a business question. I, I think that AI is just a technology among others, and so you need to choose when and how to use AI. And and how to use AI, because for instance, we had uh, and we've been able to identify different collaboration modes between AI and humans. And uh, just to get um, one example, uh, 
that might be uh, interesting. IBM Watson, everyone knows IBM Watson, or at least uh, the uh, eldest of us, uh, when it was uh, winning the Geopardy game. And then you had IBM Watson Health that was not a great success in many cases because people were expecting the uh, IBM Watson to give the answer, to decide what, uh, let's say, the treatment for cancer should be. There, it was a failure. But for some oncologists, they tried to get um, IBM Watson as a, what I call a recommender. Because they realized that IBM Watson was able to compare the, uh, the, the, the genes profile of the patient with many gene mutations that were already digitized and gathered in many, uh, in many uh, papers, scientific papers. And therefore, was able to propose some specific um, a specific treatment that would have been overlooked otherwise. So it's important they should come and say, okay, here is my problem, how can I solve it? And up to us together, we see how we can use AI. And you need to think how to optimize this human plus AI approach. But it is sure that with AI, you need to revisit your entire process and put AI a bit at the core of your processes with humans supporting and developing it. Yeah, and maybe if I can add on that, I see too many companies thinking, oh, AI is a big thing, so I need to invest, I need to do something there. And then starting off 100 different pilots across the board with different startups and different, a lot of stuff that is small scale. The problem when you do that is that you are not solving the bigger business questions, you are not focusing the technology on where the value is, and you're not revamping your culture and your organization in a way for it to scale. I would advise companies to focus on the one, two, three bigger business unicorns that they want to solve, and focus on that, and go for end-to-end re-engineering, leveraging AI uh, for, for the process and decision making, but in a very disruptive way. So in the limited amount of time, I have one very large question. You know, Francois, you've done business in China. Obviously, BCG uh, is around the world. One of the you know, concerns that animates both the EU and the United States right now is this concern that China in particular has an AI advantage. You know, they have less data privacy issues, hoovering up data. Um, is it your impression, though, that there is any differential between how, let's say, Asian companies or Chinese companies are integrating AI? Are, are EU and American companies actually more nimble about that? So you have 11 seconds. 10 seconds. Basically, <laughs> their main objective is not to innovate, but to upgrade the traditional companies. And therefore, they are creating vertical AI ecosystems with companies mastering the technology but knowing the industry very well. And this combination of vertical AI ecosystems is the next frontier for competition. So I think that we should not be afraid from, uh, I would say, but fr from, from a geopolitical perspective. It is a new way to compete. So let's try to see, because we have the ingredients. Now we need to find the secret sauce. Well, maybe that will be uh, the seventh edition of uh, the AI question, which, which cultures and which companies do it better and which geographies. Thank you all very much. Thank you for Thank your you. time today.